I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses. The voice I hear falling on my ears, the Son of God discloses. And he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own. And the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. Hey everybody, Lady Cheryl here, and I'm going to welcome you to my YouTube channel. In this episode, I'm going to share with you a complete update on the first round of seeds that I sprinkled for my spring and summer garden. And I'm going to share with you the progress of the method that is called topping of peppers. And I want you to see all of the growth in those pepper plants. And I'm going to share with you a few of the seeds that I've sown for round two. And I also will talk about more things that I'm going to direct sow in the spring or late winter um, that really do better directly sown outside. Okay? If you have any questions after watching my video, you can leave those questions in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. All right. Let's get started. I went to the $1.25 store today to pick up some little containers. And then I picked up Brian and Bria because I needed their help. The thing I got was these uh, little uh, totes. They have holes in them. But what I liked about them is they're very, very sturdy. These won't be used outside. They will always be used inside unless they go in the greenhouse. Let me take my mask off. Step back, kids. Because uh, I was trying to, I'm transitioning, like I said, to get everything to the greenhouse. So I moved a lot of stuff out of the grow room. And and I knew that I needed something uh, small. Uh, I put these things in order. Like these are all, well, these three are basil. And I got some more little pictures. These right here, they're real durable. I have a couple of them in the greenhouse. And my grandchildren like to have their own. So we'll put their names on it. But um, Brian and Bria were amazed at the um, growth of the plants. Wow, these plants are so green and pretty. Thank you. They grew a lot since the last time we were here. They did what? These plants growed a lot. Growed or grew? Grew a lot since the last time we were here. Yeah, they did. <laughs> okay, let's talk about these plants. These are my pepper plants. These are the ones that I topped off, guys. And they are doing so well. Can you hold this plant for me, Brian? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I, want to, I want to space this out so people can see all of the new growth that has occurred, that has grown since I last topped them off. Okay? Let's look at this one. Hold that one. Let's look at this one. Same thing here, guys. You remember I snipped it off. So I'm just going to pinch this one off since it got damaged by the... Uh, sticky tape that we use to keep the gnats out and or to trap the gnats and those look pretty good. Hey guys, let me show you these pepper plants. Wonderful. I topped them. Remember in the video, look at those peppers. We have four peppers growing. And if you remember, I topped these plants off when they had peppers on them. And look here, one, two, three, four, five, or on there here. And they're, but they're stronger. The stems can hold it. So I got these uh, trays too, this little black container. I already had two of them. I went back and I got two more um, that can hold about seven pepper plants in it at a time. Uh oh. Squeezing that one up. Okay, just want to share that with you. Now let's move on. We have more plants. If you guys will look closely, you will see that there's an oscillating fan very near, right here, 
to these plants to give them a little breeze, mimicking wind so that when we move these plants on February 28th or before, a day or so before, uh, these will be used to the breeze from outside, the elements, the wind. And let me show you some other pepper plants that are doing really well. I've got six of them in this container. And you can see where I topped them off. They are growing real fast, doing really well. And here's some pepper plants over here with peppers on them. They're doing really well. Here is dill. And this is the red Texas star hibiscus and the white Texas star hibiscus. Yeah, so W under there. And the same thing here. And we have a hibiscus here with some, I think those are mustard seeds. And over here, we have berry goes and basil are doing very well. And I want you to know that I put some pearl light at the top, trying to uh, be able to see where the uh, fungus gnats that came from the potting mix. Because remember, I don't sanitize the potting mix. And this is a red basil. And this, of course, is a, I think it's ginger. And this light is a grow light my brother made me. Years ago, it has like four lights up under it. And it has a reflector. You can let it down, Bria. And I used to use these out in the greenhouse when I was starting seeds out in the greenhouse. But we have marigolds. Uh, white and red Texas star hibiscus under here, as well as some okra and eggplant. Okay. Now, let's go up to this table. And you can see we have a lot of eggplant back over there. And we have a lot of zinnia. Some of the zinnias are getting ready to flower. And we have more marigolds, more basil, more spinach. Uh, marigolds are doing wonderful. We have right in here, this is, uh, look how long that vine is. I'm gonna have to put this out in the greenhouse before uh, two weeks. But it is um, the vine, what is it called? Morning Glories. I have to stop and think, I have so much growing. We have peas over here and you can see I don't know if you've ever eaten them, but you can cut these little pea shoots off and put them in your salad. Um, and I can do that if they get too long before it's time to move everything out in the greenhouse. And as you can see, I just have crates and regular shop lights that are on top of them. Let me show you right here and I just take a little clear packing tape to try to keep it a little stable um, because I was dropping so many things. Now, this is what I'm really excited about. This is the beginning of a mimosa tree. I have a couple of them growing in my, my backyard. Let me see if I can move this so I can get some light here. So that's what the mimosa tree looks like when it's young. Some people call the flowers Italian silk. They're, this, it's really beautiful and they are edible. Okay, so that's what the trees look like when they're really, really small. So mimosa is one of those uh, trees that you can grow from seed and it does not have to be grafted onto a strong or fast growing rootstock. Starting my second round of seeds. And right here, we have some moonflowers that I gave um, uh, people in my perp club. And some people won them on during my Monday night, night live chat. And here's an old picture of what the moonflowers look like. The flowers open up in the dark and then they fall off shortly after sunrise. Here are soursops. Up here, I don't have them labeled, but I know what it is. It's marigolds in these three cups. On this heating mat, uh, and there's no grow light on them. Here are purple top rutabaker, because I'm gonna cook those like a, a potato substitute. And I got these seeds from Homestead Heart. 
And in these little cups are cucumbers. Uh, Auntie's Backyard Garden sent me the seeds. Bria dropped one of them. And so as soon as I finish this video, you can see where it fell out of this cup. I'm going to go ahead on and just plant this one in potting mix. And over here, I'm growing habanero peppers. These are seeds that my dear friend, Miss Beverly, gave me. And over here, I'm growing lavender. And let me move up to this shelf. And let me show you that I put some of those lavender seeds in here. Okay, so I'm going to go around this curve of the shelving unit and show you more peas, more uh, heirloom zinnias. Right here is uh, Jamaican sorrel and marigolds and zinnias. And let me see if I can come to the front. And remember when I said some of the zinnias are getting ready to flower? Well, there's one right there. And I think I got a couple more. More Jamaican sorrel back there for tea and white and red hibiscus. One, two, three. And we have more red and white hibiscus back there where my finger is pointing. And uh, zinnia here. I didn't name all of the zinnias. I didn't label them because I have so many heirloom zinnias that to me it didn't make sense to do it. I'll know it when uh, the flower develops. Here's dill and purple top turnips because I've been using that as a, a potato substitute. And I've got a morning glory that's stuck in here. These are going to have to be put in baskets or something in the greenhouse real soon because they're not going to be able to hang out here. And I have more eggplant back there and spinach, more sweet peas on the end there. And now let's go down to the bottom row. I have three containers of tomatoes. So that's six, 12. And then I have some down here. Let's put them back up. That's 18 uh, various tomato plants. And this is eggplant. Guys, I'm really showing you what the, you know, the seeds that I'm going in the house. There's a lot of okra. Let me see if I can move this right here. Move. I gotta be careful. This stuff will fall down in a heartbeat. There we go. See all that, that okra? And then that back container back there. That's all okra. And let me give you a pearl from Cheryl, something I've learned during the years. I used to think when I saw these little beads, these little white beads under the leaves of my Clemson spineless okra, I used to think those were the beginning of aphid eggs, but it's not. It's just something that happens to this okra where it'll form a little nodule or a little bead on the other underside of the leaf, and it's normal. And it'll drop off as the, the leaf grows. Um, I'm gonna do some research and I may just insert a little bit more information about it. But I used to take this and spray and spray and spray with water and try to get those little iridescent little, uh, you can see it right here, those little iridescent little droplets off but they're harmless. It's part something that the plant does, it secretes. And they form those little knots or those little beads. I'll look it up and insert some information in here. Uh oh, that's my alarm. As I was saying, I would wash those little beads off and then the next day they would reappear. And I'm like, what's going on? So I started researching and I found out that the plant actually secrete those little balls. And what they do actually is uh, protect your plant. So if you see those little uh, clear balls, know that you have a healthy plant and it is secreting that. It's a way of protecting itself from pests uh invading or laying eggs on the other underside like what i'm showing you right there so it's nothing wrong it's not aphids it's actually an indicator of a very healthy plant so i have 
have a lot of more plants back there. Dill, spinach, purple top turnips, marigolds, morning glories. That's binding and coming all the way down there. And uh, I just want you to know that this is what I'm going to um, grow inside the home and then move to the greenhouse. But I have a lot more that I'm seeds that I'm going to direct sow in March. And yesterday, let me go over here and show you that I started my, let me see if I can read you from here, turmeric and ginger. And I have some more ginger I'm going to start. So I grow what I need and I need more ginger and turmeric for my teas. So this is just a brief, quick update on what I'm growing inside the home and getting ready to move to the greenhouse in less than 14 days. And I will let you see everything once I make that move. So like I said, there's a little fan down here that's mimicking wind. You can see the deal blowing as it oscillates. And then this taller fan right here, I'll turn it on low and it will mimic wind over here for a portion of the day. And then I will move it and make sure that it's hitting the seedlings right in this area here. Okay, I hope I motivated you in some way or inspired you to start your seeds. I like to grow by seed one. It's cheaper, save a lot of money, especially if you do like I do, save seeds. Two, I get the chance to, to grow a lot of varieties that I can't buy in the nurseries and the big box stores. Three, I get a jump on the season because these plants are not in the nursery right now in my area. Nobody has anything like this. So if I can control the environment in the greenhouse and in my home, then I can start putting these out into the garden around the second week in March. And I'm going to show you something that I uh, purchased today. These are bell cloches. And I got these from $1.25 store. And these will act as a thermal insulator and leak Bria spin in the top. And it has a, um, uh, what do you call that? Guys, I can't even think right now. Uh, where you can open it up and let air come in. And of course, you know that the light will transmit and go straight through there. So if I put some tomato plants out a little early, like I always do, I will put this on top of the plants. Okay? And I saw this. Uh, in a video, uh, UT, Angel, and Kiddo, they grow a lot of pepper plants. I mean, and tomato plants in the hundreds of them. And um, I saw this in their video yesterday, and I got up early this morning and went and got me uh, what they had. They only had eight left. Okay, so that's it for today. I hope you're motivated. Thank Bye. you for watching. Bye. Okay.